Hi all, Dr. Clerk here again, and for forest management, this time we're going to talk about canopy cover. Um, we hinted on it a while back when we initially were introducing kind of measurement techniques, but now I'm going to dive into some uh, deeper parts of the canopy cover. Okay, So there are lots of ways at which you can get at canopy cover. Some are very high tech. Um, and fairly costly, and some are extremely easy, and, you know, the piece of equipment that you might be using, something like this here, okay, um, you know, it might cost you 40 bucks. Um, very easy, um, and you can get a lot of information. Obviously, the more high-tech, it is probably the more information you get. And I don't want to say the, the higher the quality of the information. Um, it depends on what you're after. Okay. So we're going to look at some of these examples. This is a LIDAR example, which is a laser example where a plane flies over and shoots lasers down and tells basically the height of the trees and then also the, the amount of area that they take up. This is an aerial photo here that's been rendered so all vegetation um, becomes red and so it's easier to stick it into a program and get the canopy cover from that okay but we're going to look at all the different methods and then um, at the end you'll see me do um, a canopy cover in the same forest the rodeo for fire forest um, that you saw before with the other measurements you'll see that video and a little more detail on on how i collect canopy cover Okay, so <clears throat> first off, equipment. So there are lots of ways to do this. I, I said that before. There are, you know, photography ways. So you can take um, aerial photo photography or aerial photograph, which involves typically an airplane. And if it's done correctly, the airplane will fly over whatever area you're interested in and either there will be an individual taking pictures manually i've done this before so there's a port in the bottom of the plane you lay down on your stomach camera through the port and you're clicking pictures at a given rate or of a given area more high-tech aerial photographs are done with a camera that's mounted on the plane this costs a lot more and it's ran to a computer and then it takes pictures at a certain interval. Okay, so depends on either way it works as long as the pilot's good and the pilot keeps the plane um, level and plane and plane. <laughs> um, you can't have more than a 3% tilt. Um, otherwise, the photograph is not considered a true aerial photograph. At any rate, you can take the picture and then you can modify that picture by sticking into programs and they'll spit out a value of the canopy cover. You can also do this from underneath the canopy, um, which is we often call a ground photograph or a, a canopy photograph from the ground, okay, which means that the camera is pointed up into the canopy Okay, and a picture is taken. Normally the camera is resting on the ground and often you have to use a specific lens for these specific programs. Often you're using what's called a fisheye lens okay, or at least a wide angle lens. It depends on the program and it depends on the manipulation that you're interested in. Okay. Densiometers, okay, there are two types of densiometers that are currently used fairly often. The GRS or the Geographic Resource Solution Densiometer, that's from this company, okay, or the Spherical Crown Densiometer, which is this mirror um, densiometer here. This is the old school method. This is the way that most people used to take the measurement, okay, and I would argue that a lot of people use these now because they're a little bit easier. There's only four quadrants versus a, you know, it depends on the, the mirror itself. Sometimes there's 17, sometimes there's 34. It depends on the mirror, how many sections it is. If you're good, the mirror is probably much more accurate 
than the GRS, but the GRS is faster. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a level inside the GRS. So you know that you're, you know, perfectly level when you're looking up at the canopy. And there's a level here, this little bubble level that um, is on this uh, spherical densiometer, which tells you whether you're level or not. Because you really need to be have an even playing field when you're taking the canopy cover. You need to know that you're not tilting it at an angle or anything like that, that you, you're doing it correctly. And then probably the last one that is getting um, a lot more use now because lasers and things like that are, are a little bit more uh, reasonable priced and things like that. That's the LIDAR system, okay, or laser um, system. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. Okay, so the photography method, like I said before, photographs, um, they can be aerial photographs. Here's another aerial photograph where people are, you know, they're trying to estimate the canopy cover in a given city. Okay, so how many trees do you have? Okay, this is a way that you can get at a lot of information. I don't know if, if you're familiar, but there's information that's coming out now about communities, city communities, and the amount of canopy cover or tree cover in the different neighborhoods. And it shows that um, poor neighborhoods or neighborhoods of individuals that um, are around minimum wage or less have, you know, a significant less amount of canopy cover than the neighborhoods of individuals that um, are more wealthy. So in other words, people that are poor don't have trees and people that are um, wealthy typically have trees. Um, this is a big deal when you're talking about neighborhoods that occur in environments that are very um, warm in the summer which means that there's no shade for individuals who are poor, but wealthy individuals have much more shade. Um, this has a lot to do with um, just where city planners have planted trees and concentrate in from, you know, that kind of material in certain regions. Okay. But we're now drawing attention to that and aerial photo photographs can point to that. And that's an example of that. It's been manipulated again to where the canopy or the red um, indicates uh, tree growth, okay, or canopy cover. So you can estimate that using a program. The other way to do that is, again, take a picture from underneath the canopy, shooting it up, okay, and then there are multiple ways to do this. Um, the old school method is to then divide your picture into force and calculate it yourself by hand, um, you can do this by printing it out and you can cut out the green, the canopy. You can cut it out with a pair of scissors. Okay. And then, so you'd weigh the paper itself, cut it out, and then weigh the parts that you're considering canopy. And then that'll give you the percent of the entire region that's canopy. That's an old school method. Um, I, you know, sometimes I use it in classes and things like that, but most people just stick it into a computer program. And this computer program will take the initial photograph, it will take that initial photograph and it will convert it into a canopy and it will spit out your canopy um, closure or your canopy cover. Um, and that, that gives you that estimate. It's a lot faster, but again, when you're using a method like this, you have to make sure that your photography equipment is set up for this kind of canopy cover method. Okay, you have to have the right lens, you have to know um, some other things like you should be taking it at the same time of day, um, so the light penetration is the same, uh, where the sun is at, that kind of stuff can cause shadows, etc. That um, you want to minimize when you're taking canopy cover. Okay. But again, I would say that these methods, the camera method and even the aerial photography method are, the aerial photography method is used quite often, but it's used at a very broad 
spectrum. So you might be looking at an entire forest or you're looking at an entire city landscape or something like that. The photography method, you might be trying to get at more specific information. The photography equipment is not just going to capture um, canopy cover, but it's also going to tell you some other things like you can get an idea of branching of, you know, trees and, and where potential nest sites might be, okay, if there's any, uh, if there's any like mistletoe or disease in the trees in the canopy, you can get that from, from a photograph, um, and it just gives you other information, okay. Laser technology or LIDAR technology, again, this is fairly uh, advanced very expensive, um, although large, uh, either large forest management regions, maybe uh, the Forest Service in a given region might be interested in this whole, uh, to do use LIDAR in this whole forest, um, or maybe individuals that are interested in a tree farm or have a tree farm, they might be interested in doing this over their tree farm to look at canopy cover. Okay. But it's it's a wide spath or wide range where you're going to use this. You're not going to use it in, at a specific site. Okay. What you would then do is you would take that information, that LIDAR information. So what happens is lasers are shot down from the underbelly of the plane as they fly over. And those lasers will come down and they will bounce off of things and come back up and received. If it bounces off the ground, then that means the laser went all the way through and there's no canopy there. If it bounces off midway down the tree, okay, it, it bounces up and it tells the distance. So what it does is it then tells you basically the height of the trees. So this is another way to get height of trees, but it tells you not only the height of the tree, how densely packed are the trees in a given region. And you'd run your plane on a transect. You have a known region, a known height that the, the plane is flying, a known distance, etc., to use this LIDAR technology. Like I said before, this is for advanced studies um, and for, you know, individuals that have a little bit more money. I can tell you, you know, just an aerial photograph to hire someone to fly over a certain region and hire a photography a photographer to take an aerial photograph, you might be looking at a thousand to two thousand dollars per flight. To do a lidar system, you have to have a very sophisticated plane um, that's fitted with the lidar technology. You might be looking at ten thousand dollars a flight. Okay, for some people it's well worth it. For some regions it's well worth it, but for smaller studies, you know, and smaller management units, it it's might not be worth it. Okay. So let's talk about densiometers. This is probably what still today goes down as the most used um, system to get canopy cover. Again, there are two main types, the sphere, spherical crown densiometer, which is a mirror, and the geographic resource solution or the GRS, which is basically a tube with a mirror in it. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see in there, but if you can, you can see there's a mirror in there with some levels, okay, and that allows you to get canopy cover. Okay. Now, just having the equipment doesn't really do all of what you need um, to get canopy cover. You need to also determine, well, what is the goal of the management? Is the goal of the management to get can be covered across a wide spath of range. So maybe, you know, a whole forest area that you're managing, or is the canopy cover just a given region that maybe you found, maybe you found a bald eagle nest and you're interested in the canopy cover within that region. Okay. Um, or maybe you're interested in spotted owls and you're interested in, well, how much canopy cover are these spotted owls? Okay. If you're talking about a wide spath or a wide region, you're probably going to use a transect. This is a transect line. So you run a tape 
on that tape you have random numbers okay you'll see from the video what i'm talking about you have random numbers that you need to go okay and then you'll take a canopy cover at that random space and then you'll move to the next one along with canopy cover you might be looking at all kinds of other things okay the distance to the nearest tree you might be looking at the age of that nearest tree the dbh of that nearest tree the height of that nearest tree the floor cover or floor vegetation type all kinds of things um, along that transect and that's what most people would do is they'd run a transect and then they take multiple measurements at each spot on that transect Okay. A single point measurement would be that you are interested in just this single tree and the canopy that's coming off that single tree. Okay, So you might just take a single point or single point measurement. Maybe you have random points within a forest, okay, all randomized, and you just take a measurement from that single random point. Okay, Using your GPS, you have coordinates of that point, and you're just taking your single point from that measurement. Okay, that occurs also. It's um, it, it's just another method at randomizing the data. Okay, and then if you know you're interested in a single tree, maybe then you're often going to do what's called the compass point measurement or an NESW north, east, southwest point measurement, where you're taking measurements at the four corners of a tree. So that might be in case, well, you got a bald eagle's nest or you got a, you know, a spotted owl in the nest or something along those lines. And you're interested in what's the canopy cover at which, you know, this was attracting this bird um, or whatever it might be to this specific point. OK, so next up, you're going to see um, a video of me carrying out canopy cover measurements and it's fairly simple um, again like I said before often these are ran in conjunction with a bunch of other data um, so you can get an idea of the overall health of the forest overall um, density of the trees in the forest and it can give you a lot of information like if this tree is removed well how much is that going to open the forest um, you know, what was the canopy cover from that single tree uh, in that forest? OK. All right. So watch the the rest of the video is me carrying out um, using a densiometer, the geographic resource solution densiometer or GRS to carry out some canopy cover. OK. Till next time. Back and now I'm going to use the GRS. Okay, to get canopy cover um, near the tree that we took the DBH and height of. Okay? Now, often, I, like I said before, when you're taking canopy cover, you're interested in canopy cover along a transect. So maybe you're pulling random numbers. So maybe you have a 100-meter transect, and you're pulling random numbers, and you're going to take 10 samples on that 100 meters. Okay? And so you would come to that or that first sample, maybe it's 11 meters down the transect, okay? and then you take a canopy cover. In this case, I'm looking at a canopy cover. I'm going to show you kind of what I see. Now, it's not going to be directly what I see, okay? but again, you can see that there's canopy cover there, okay? and my estimate on canopy cover is about 65% and it's dominated by a conifer okay so 65 percent canopy cover it's con conifer in this case ponderosa pine is what's you know got that canopy cover okay so then let's say we go to the next line okay and let's say it is at 35 Okay, um, flip that over, look, okay, and we're right next to a, a conifer tree, okay, and my estimate is 91% or so canopy cover from, again, a conifer tree, a ponderosa pine. So then we can go 
and take another measurement down our transect. Okay, this transect happens to be running north to south. Okay, and we're you know at about 55. Okay, we look up, nothing. Okay, so the canopy cover is zero. Okay, and we start moving and go. Now maybe we're at 62. Okay, look up. Canopy cover is zero. Okay, maybe the next random number is say maybe it's 85. Okay, 85. Look up. Okay, again, zero. Okay, and that's how canopy cover. Uh, recorded is you're recording canopy cover across the transect. Okay? In some cases when individuals want to, researchers want to document how much canopy cover a given tree might provide, okay? and it's maybe a certain age tree might provide, then a lot of times they'll do kind of a north, south, east west measurement of the tree and then kind of average the canopy cover and that kind of gets you the four points of that tree and they might do it a known distance from the tree so maybe they say all right here's a big ponderosa pine okay so i'm going to take canopy cover at three meters from the trunk of the tree on the south side north side east side and west side okay so three meters from the tree take the canopy cover we're at 100 percent on the south side okay so that's that's a typical um way to take canopy cover again canopy cover with a grs system is simple easy um and it's probably as accurate as any of the other systems uh, the mirror system takes a little bit longer because you need to um, count the number of mirrors. Uh, the camera system is really simple um, in the field, but then you take it back to the lab and you're going to do some digital uh, imagery stuff. Sometimes you can stick it into a program that does it all for you. If that's the case, then that's probably the simplest method. Um, but again, there's lots of methods to do it. The purpose of it is to often tell, well, what what's it going to uh, do to the understory, okay? So if you have really heavy canopy cover, then you can predict how much light's coming through um, to the understory plants. That's often what people are using it for. <clears throat> if you really want data for that kind of information, you use a light intensity meter, which is fairly expensive, and you set up a light intensity meter in different regions underneath the canopy and that tells you exactly how much light's coming through. Right? But a lot of people don't use those because they're a very expensive piece of equipment and you can get it the same kind of information with a simple GRS system or a convex mirror system or a camera. Okay.